we we just don't have any words that we call research we call you know all the all the wording that you find in stem mm -hmm. um in a western institutional academia mm -hmm. institution um there's no there's not really any terminology in indigenous language it's just the way of knowing mm -hmm. and i think that um, researchers and evaluators really need to understand that that when a native student or a native person talks and you ask them this particular question the identity well it's who i am and 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 is there a science identity that's a great question because then they start really um rethinking uh, it's a chance for them to rethink ab about their language use and and like i told you before um these students when we did pre-interviews they, they they understood it as it's a way of knowing and then just recently when I did the interviews again, you can see the growth of science um, language. They were, they were, they built their science language, but mm -hmm. they still had that same um, answer mm -hmm. that it was, it's, it's science for them is a, a way of knowing and it's embedded. So mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't call it a separate identity that they're mm -hmm. building with mm -hmm. that. The, the, they're just building language. They're building uh -huh. their language, and and um, so I don't know, maybe a different word for for that type of concept. I, I, I think it's embedded. They didn't realize that there was a term for it. And they didn't realize that that's what they were doing <clears throat> until they got into higher education. So with that said, you know, the identity is internalized and, and, and um, from that cultural lens. But when they're getting, when they got into <clears throat> the science, the university science arena, the Western science, they started learning all of this language. So, when talking them from from that pre-interview to where they are now the language of science was really prevalent um so 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 they built they were building their language skills which means that they were creating uh, their own unique identity of 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 what science means to them mm -hmm. so i think it depends on its individual individual base because it's not a culture well kind of sort of um, it's not in a, a culture that they're born into it's a learned understanding so um, um, and through their understanding these students understanding including myself um, it's it's we're learning science identity in in so many ways mm -hmm from that cultural lens. We just don't call it science identity. We don't have a, we don't have a term for science. Right. It's, it's what we do. It's our ways of knowing. You know, it's my understanding from um, um, working with different tribes that a lot of them have what you call apprenticeships. Mm -hmm. um, and that was their way of educating and grooming <clears throat> youth to learn this particular knowledge. So we did have, and we do, so there's some tribes that do really still, including my tribe, that they have specialized individuals that are groomed to um, embrace this specialized knowledge that nobody else is privy to that um, they're, they're born into, some of them are born into these societies and some of them are selected or some of them pre-volunteer um, um, for being a part of those um, societies or, or some of them call moieties or, you know, they're, they're just different systems within those cultures that um, really align themselves to um, a particular um, you would call it a content area in academia. Mm -hmm. And so um, from early on, they're groomed to be, uh, they're groomed to take over that leadership mm -hmm. of that particular society or that function. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there, that we do have um, those in the many tribes um, um, that I've worked with, uh, they, they do have such individuals 
that are specialized, um, such as, you know, you have, um, I'll give you an example. You have what um, in the books they call sky watchers um, in archaeo astronomy. And so um, those are specialized individuals that um, have this deep, deep knowledge of how the earth and the universe and the um, solar system um, work with one another. And they've captured those through time. And so they have this uh, um, implicit understanding of the Earth's movement and the sun in relationship and the moon in relationship to that movement. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, so you call them sky watchers. We call them, well, not you, but the textbooks, academia calls them sky watchers, research, <clears throat> archaeoastronomy, uh, um, research. Uh, we have our specific names within our own um, communities that um, we refer to them as. Mm -hmm.